guys, just to be blunt, none of the surviving B-17s are anywhere close to what they looked like during the war. And so by, because we're having to rebuild from the ground up, that gives us the opportunity to focus on little details that others might not be able to do so. And I'm saying that I don't want to criticize anybody's work. It's just what you have available to you, especially now with the internet. We have so much more in resources than we ever could before. And so, for example, Lucky 13 was built by Douglas. And Douglas tended, instead of anodizing their ribs and stringers, they dipped them in zinc chromate. So we replicate this. So not only do we have green on bare metal, but it wasn't sprayed on, it's dipped. And you can see the run marks, just like they did during the war. And just like they did during the war, all the bare aluminum has the stamps on it from the, from the mills that made it. And you, you see it on this side of this one and on this side of that one, where we scanned in some original wreckage and recreated those markings. A little bare right now because we rebuilt the aft fuselage of Libertyville and finished it up. So now this is the aft fuselage of the Lake Dyke plane. And things tend to look a little bare because you can put stuff in the jig, take it out, put it back, because you want to fit it to make sure everything fits just right. These are all tailwheel brackets. This is the armor plate from the cockpit door. All three were dug up at air bases in England. Cow flaps, they, these little things here. And to me, this is where a lot of the really fun stuff is. So um, these are portable oxygen brackets for the walk-around oxygen bottles. Uh, we've got one over here. Yeah. So each bottle gives you about five to eight minutes of oxygen. The oxygen panels, and I'll set it out here in the light. It took a lot of work to I had to restore the gauges that went in there because they're unique to 1943. And one of the things that we replicate with that is that, and this, they did this during the war, is if you're flying at night, you use phosphorescent ink to see the markings. So we use that too. So I turn on the black light and everything glows. This is another one of the radio systems here. This is called the liaison system. And each of these is each of these are like a like a VHS tape and they cover a certain set of frequencies. So if you needed to change your frequency, you take out one, put in the other. For the tail gun. So, the, the instrument panel has a housing on it that it attaches to, 
and we haven't finished that housing yet. So this is a wooden placeholder just to hold the gauges until we're finished. And when we're ready, then we'll do the finished black panel. So this is just a wooden placeholder, mm -hmm. but all those gauges took a very long time to find because they're, they have to meet 1943 spec. And one of the telltale signs of that is the coloring when you turn, when you put them in the dark.